Hey, hey, party people. Let's talk about art supplies and brands of markers and paints and color pencils and how I personally think it matters extremely very little what you're actually using. To prove my point, if you will pay attention to what I'm doing on screen, I'm going to be doing two marker renderings for y'all. Okay, The one on the left is going to be done using a bunch of different marker brands, Prismacolor, Tarp Pack, Concept, Touch, Pro Marker. The figure on the right, I'm going to do entirely in Copic markers because everybody thinks that Copics are the end-all, be-all, and all that good stuff, right? I personally enjoy Copics very much, but I do not think that they are the best. They are not the number one marker. They are not the thing that you must have to be a legit illustrator or a great illustrator or anything. Copics are simply a good marker, and that's it. And you may be wondering, well, Zoe, then why do you keep going to Japan and buying 40 Copics at a time? <laughs> Listen, I do not go to Japan to buy Copics. <laughs> I go to Japan to study. But, you know, when I'm in Tokyo, I mean, anytime I travel anywhere, I try to buy things that are either not available where I live or hard to get where I live or just much cheaper than where I live. And Copics where I live are like eight or nine, eight or nine bucks a pop with tax. Copics in Japan are 4 or $5. So, hell yes, I'm going to be finding myself in Tokyo buying Copics in colors I'm almost guaranteed I will use, like grays, like skin tones, right? Because 99.9% .9 of the illustrations I do are people wearing clothes, right? I work in fashion. Hello. So, yeah. I mean, if I could find, if I were traveling somewhere and I found a 50% off sale on chart packs, I'd buy 30 of those too. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I love Copics. They're, they're good. They're great markers. The end. Are they the only? Are they the best? No. Okay. So to clarify, I like Prismacolors. I like chart packs. I like Copics. I like Pro Markers. I only have two concept markers and they're quickly like I really want to go get some more uh, because I think their quality is great. They were less than three dollars a piece when I bought them in New York back in December. So I would like to go get some more. I really I haven't seen them in any brick and mortars near me yet. And I'm kind of reluctant to buy a bunch more art supplies right now because, you know, I traveled a bunch this year and already bought a bunch more stuff. But the next time I'm buying markers and I can get some concepts, that's where I'm going with that, okay? And you're, uh, you're going to see me use the concepts on the red skirt, and they're great, okay? So, yeah, lots of great, like, I've seen a lot of my students use Blick markers and, um... I like those two. I just bought my first one. I like it so far. So yeah, there are a lot. The Marvy Plumes I got in Japan, those are also awesome. You know, there are a lot of good brands out there. And you may be one thinking on the one hand, great, seriously, which ones do I buy, Zoe? On the other hand, it might free you up by, you know, letting you know that it's okay. Just, just pick a set. Just pick some. And, you know... People think, oh, if I buy these, I'm going to be better. If I buy those, I'm going to be better. It, that's not it. Just buy some and start drawing. That's like literally what it is. Is The only way you're going to get better, the only way you're going to be a quote-unquote legit illustrator, I don't even know what the hell that means, okay? But the only way you're going to get better, the way, only way you're going to get good is if you go get some markers and you start markering. The only way you're going to get good at watercolors is if you go buy some freaking watercolors and start watercoloring, etc., etc. You get my point, right? Gouache. Okay, what are some brands I like? Windsor & Newton. Okay. Um, the Knicker brand that I got in Japan. Those are great. I picked up a few Pabeos. I haven't played a whole lot, but I really like what I'm seeing so far. 
The Holbein gouache, they're good. I don't like them as much as the Knicker or the Windsor Newton. Okay. And still testing out the talents. Color pencils. I like Prismacolor. I like Faber-Castell Polychromos. Those I think I have the most of. Everyone thinks that Faber-Castell Polychromos is the end-all be-all. It's like the Copic version of color pencils. Like everyone loves those and thinks they're the best. I don't think they're the best. I don't, okay? They're, they're great color pencils. Are they the best? Whatever, okay? For me, you know, if you follow my channel, you know I don't use color pencils as a main medium anyway. I only use them for detail work, so, you know, I'm not the best judge of color pencils in that way. You know, if you use color pencils the way I use them, you know, whatever. So, in this demo, on the figure on the left, I'm going to be doing all the color pencil work with Prismacolor, a black, a black Prismacolor color pencil. And then on the figure on the right, I'm going to use a Faber-Cassell Polychromos black color pencil. Okay. And we'll see what we see. When I do product reviews, whether it's for my own curiosity or for this channel. I, I basically put products into three categories, one of three categories. Okay, number one, this is a good product, and I'm fairly certain that people will either A, like it, or B, love it, depending on personal preference and usage needs. Number two, this is a piece of crap. Nobody get it, nobody use it, nobody, not even if you get it for free. If your favorite and the whole wide world gets it to you by accident, thank her profusely, don't use it. <laughs> Category number three is, I'm aware that not everyone, you know, has a lot of money to spend on art supplies. I was so broke in college, it's not even funny. I get it. I created the cheap art supply product review video series for y'all. And so the third category is, hey, this is a good product for the price point. It doesn't compare to professional grade, but it's good for the price point. It's good to buy now and get started before you start investing heavily money-wise into art supplies, okay? You don't need to start learning how to draw with this, this huge budget. You don't need a big budget to get started. So here, like, and you know, when I review the cheaper stuff, you know, I'm not putting it to the same standard. I'm not, you know, reviewing Artist Loft, watercolors, like I'm reviewing Daniel Smith watercolors or Windsor Newton watercolors, okay? It's not the same. But yeah, that third category is, yeah, for the price, this is a good deal. Check them out, okay? So those are the three categories of products. Just put everything in those three categories. I hope this helps free you a little bit. It's like, yeah, you know, product review videos are fun to watch, but don't get your panties in a twist. Don't get, you know, buyer's anxiety trying to figure out what you need to get to be a rock star. What you need to be a rock star is to go get some stuff and get to work, okay? If you're gonna be spending time watching videos, go watch some tutorials, whether they're mine or someone else's, on how to use the materials, right? How to render shiny fabrics, how to render beading, uh, how to draw clothes, how to draw drapey clothes, how to draw ruffles, you know, how to draw figures, how to render hair, you know, how to use the materials and get practicing and stop worrying about what you need to get. I get so many questions like, Zoe, what do you recommend for beginners? There's not a special thing that I recommend for beginners versus more advanced students because you know, if something is tricky to use, I wouldn't recommend it to even more advanced people anyway. I'm, I would say I'm fairly advanced. I don't want to use something that's tricky to use either. <laughs> For those of you who want more deep dive videos into different media materials, 
I have a playlist called Different Media and Materials. You know, I have an intro to papers, I have an intro to color pencils, I have an intro to markers, I have a video on my marker collection. You go watch those where I really discuss everything in depth. We're going to look at these two illustrations next to each other, and I dare you to tell me that one of these isn't as good as the other in terms of quality of marker. Of course, you know, the colors are different. Why would I have identical colors in multiple brands in my collection? So the Copics, the skin tones are a little bit more golden tone. The Prismacolor is a little bit more rosy tone. And then, you know, of course I have, I have multiple blacks because I'm always testing which, like, which brand has a more intense black. Um, I have a whole video on shades of black markers because that's a thing. <laughs> but yeah, you know, there, if anything, if you get really close, the skin tone on the, the Copics is a little bit grainy on this paper. I don't know if it's the paper and the Copics not playing well together, if it's the Copics, but just because I started getting anal watching this, you know, kind of rendering for this video, yeah, the, the Copic skin tone's a little bit grainy. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, some brands, just like brands of anything, some brands have a coolness factor. For some reason, Prismacolors do not have a coolness factor, but I really like their markers and their color pencils, okay? They're reasonable price point and they're really good quality. And, <laughs> but Copic has a, like a coolness factor. Hardly anyone talks about Charpak. I don't know why. They're, they're like a personal, like, they're definitely up there on uh, brands I reach for. And they are like five to six dollars a marker as opposed to Copic's eight to nine dollars a marker. And I really like the Charpaks. This paper is the Windsor & Newton marker paper. And I haven't experimented a whole lot. I've used it a little bit. I like it so far. Okay, it it works pretty well. It's a tiny bit, tiny bit more opaque and thicker than the Bien Fang. I have found on this brand that the right side of the paper is the top side when you open the cover. So that's always important when you're looking at marker paper is what's the right side of the paper. So always test that. But yeah, the paper is good. All the markers are good, you know. And I mean, you tell me. It's like, yeah, Zoe, the Copics are so much obvious. It's like the better illustration because because why? Freaking liars. Personally, I layer different brands on top of other layers constantly. Like I separated them out for the purposes of this video, but I put Prismacolors on top of Pro Markers, on top of Chart Packs all the time. Okay, all the alcohol-based markers layer on top of each other. I don't care. Okay, water-based like Crayola. That's like a whole different kit and caboodle. Okay, not gonna lie. Towards the end, when I was wrapping up these renderings, I'm like looking at these girls. I'm like, God, they both ended up looking kind of bitchy. <laughs> But you know what they say, every portrait is also a self-portrait. <laughs> no, I did not make that up. People say that all the time, that whenever you draw a face, you like insert a little bit of yourself into every face you draw. <laughs> and I could not stop thinking about that. And I was like, wow, they look so mad at something. <laughs> So here's a close-up view of the final finished illustration. I don't know if it's this paper not liking Copics, but in general, I think the Copic illustration is a tiny bit grainier than the other one. Is it a deal breaker? No. <laughs> hey, so give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Okay. Drop me a question in the comments. If your question is, what marker do you recommend? I like, I'm going to be really tempted to ban you from my channel. I will hate you for life. Okay. And, uh,
yeah, share, subscribe, all those good things. Go practice. For freak's sake, just go buy a couple of markers and practice already. All right, go watch tutorial, practice more. I will see you in the next video, y'all.